Hi everyone, thank you for joining our webinar session today on how to choose your MBA in the UK. My name is Daniela Shishkova and I'm an admissions advisor at Unimai and Beyond Consulting. So before we start, next slide please. Before we start, I would like to tell you that the recording of this webinar would be sent to you after a couple of days of the broadcasting and I would also like to encourage you to prepare some questions which we and our partners will be able to answer at the end of our presentation. Next slide please. So our speakers today are me. As I told you, uh, I am the admissions advisor who helps prospective MBA and master students to um, maximize their chances of getting accepted in NTU. Then we have our admissions director, uh, Flavio Bishop. And further on, we have some ladies from NTU team. Next slide, please. Which is Julie Rosborough that you're seeing right now. She's the MBA course leader. Then Kate Robbins is joining us from the career consultants and Nidhi, who is the NTU alumnus, who will share her experience from her own perspective. Next slide, please. So what I would like to tell you now is who we are, Unimai and Beyond Consulting, and um, then what we do. So we are the official representative partners of Nottingham Business School for postgraduate student recruitment. And our goal is to help you find the best study options that fit both your careers and your qualifications. And how do we do that? We do that by a very personalized approach, meaning that we work really closely with you. We can either coach you, mentor you and guide you which the best study option is so you can make a well-informed decision for your career and and personal development next slide please so um i would like to um pass on now to my colleague flavio bishop who you are seeing on the screen right now he's like i told you our admissions director at unimai and beyond consulting he has been involved in uh, creating marketing solutions for the past 15 years within the higher education and also has been an executive director of various mba and postgraduate courses advising entrepreneurs on solutions for their businesses and currently traveling all around the world being involved with HR executive. Flav? Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you very much for the lovely introduction. So here again in Nottingham Business School and we had another webinar which was a master's webinar earlier on um, before, um, before summer holidays and now we're going to have the MBA one. So, why the UK? So there's a various reason can go into this direction, but mostly mainly, um, let's go down to the basics. You're going to be exposed to an English speaking environment from the country that brought up the English language all over the world. And apart from that, on the business level, we're going to talk about the empowerment. Empowerment by challenge. What do you mean by empowerment by challenge? If you, wherever you are in the world now, you probably, if you've never been to the UK, never stood in the UK, one of the traces of the culture, culture that we pursue and we value here is the fact that we push our students to empowerment by challenging them to achieve through their own results. We guide them, we mentor them, but to allow them to make mistakes and learn from their mistakes. How we do that? By looking at their own personal development, meaning that you're all very aware that today the cutting point when a recruiter chooses someone to be employed is about you as a person, because the skills most of us have the same, but are you prepared to sell yourself to a recruiter? Are you aware of your weaknesses, your strengths? So if you're not, 
we're going to make sure here in the UK, universities and business schools, you look after this particular topic to make you a real asset for employers when time to come. Another big point about the UK, if you consider the whole of Europe and if you consider the history of this country, you have still a, a multicultural society and a cultural diversity that's immense. And this reflects in everything that we do over here. We bring innovation and creativity through this cultural diversity, which you probably find in other countries, but you find here a nice sustainable hub based in the center of Europe. What this cultural uh, diversity brings, brings international network. Coming to study in the UK, you're going to be exposed to a variety of different cultures and people from different countries that is going to broaden up your network. And from my own experience, even though today we live in a very virtual world, nothing replaces a shake of a hand of someone, or going out to the pub with someone, or playing football with someone, or sharing challenges while studying with someone. So you create a, your own hub business hub international network by coming to study here which is going to be exposed throughout my colleagues are going to be talking about them all and um, this create as i said before an incredible environment of innovative ideas that you take back home and sometimes you don't even take it back home you apply them directly here while you're studying in the various business schools and not in the business schools who showed you how this is possible through career and uh, career employment employability and also by the our modules and uh and then in mba course itself so on that i'm gonna please can you get the camera back to me um so on the next one, I'm going to introduce you now to Julie. Julie is the NBA um, portfolio leader, and Julie is going to introduce herself, <laughs> again me. She's going to talk a little bit more her and about how things are done here and how the NBA course is put together. Julie, to you. Thank you. Hello. Thank Hi. you, Flavia. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank That's you. Okay. Um, so I'm the MBA portfolio lead at the business school, at Nottingham Business School, and I've been looking after the MBA courses now for about a year. Prior to that, I worked uh, for eight years as MSc course leader, so I've got lots of uh, experience working with international students, and we do a lot here at the business school to support international students in their transition to studying in the UK. Um, if you just turn to the first slide. Okay, so uh, the MBA um, is designed here. So you'll see here in the next slide, the course structure. So we have the full course here uh, on this slide. So you can see that the first stage of the MBA is around core things that you'd see in most MBAs. Um, so you've got the responsible and sustainable leadership. So at the business school, one of our key themes is around responsibility and ethics. So we're here not just to produce future leaders, but to produce future leaders who have a good sense of all the kind of difficult issues and challenges that businesses currently face in a very chaotic and changeable world. Um, you see there that we have finance modules, strategic change, operations, marketing, um, managing people. These are modules that you'd see in MBAs, but I think the key thing that we have here is um, the strategic change and consultancy module. So that's a cap, what we would call a capstone module. So in that module, you take the knowledge you've gained in that mm -hmm. first stage of your MBA. You work with a, a live business. You have a full week work week to work on this. Our current MBA students will do this in a few weeks' time. Uh, we give them a live client uh, on a Monday. Uh, they meet the client on the Friday. You present um, consultancy recommendations and advice. So this really plays to our strength as a, as a university where practice is really important. And it's what we call experiential learning is really important. So you're not just digging into the books, but you're, you're, you're taking that knowledge from your books, from the theory, and you're applying it in a real world setting. Um, then if we move on to semester two, if we look at semester two, you'll see there that there's some choice. So you can do the core MBA. Uh, and if you do that, you have the strategic renewal and transformation module in which you'll look at strategy, change, innovation, new business models. 
and then you can choose from a list of elective modules. If you just go to the next slide, I can give you a, a flavour of what those elective modules will be. So there's a wide range of options there, finance, marketing, branding, digital marketing, whatever really kind of your, your area that you want to choose. If we go back to the previous slide, you'll see that you can also choose to do an MBA with a specialist route. So there are a number of choices here. You can do an MBA with digital marketing as your specialist. If you go to the next slide, you'll see the different options. So you'll see there, if you just go back up, yeah. that's it. You'll see that there's uh, finance, global supply chain management, and digital marketing as routes that are available. Um, and these are quite popular for students um, on the MBA. Um, if you just go back one slide, just go back one, thank you. We then move on to uh, stage three of the MBA, uh, and you'll see there that there's the um, international consultancy experience that is um, like, a little like the strategic change module that I just described, but you'll be doing a consultancy project in another country. So we take you to another country and you work with a local organization. You also have um, lectures and, and support um, from a university in that country, in that city that you're working in, who'll give you a flavour of that country and the issues that it faces. The focus on this module is slightly different, however, we're interested in how global forces impact how people do business in that country. And we're also interested in issues of diversity and how they're handled in that global context, whether they're handled well or not. Um, so again, that issue of ethics and responsibility comes through very much in that module and experiential learning, of course. Um, then you move on to business research methods and data analysis. That's basically a um, module that will prepare you for the business research project. So students, one year students will complete a, a business research project at, this, at the end of the course. Um, and uh, that, that's basically a dissertation, as you may know it um, in, other, in other universities. But the, very much the focus is on practice in business, which again fits with our focus on practice within this university. You'll see at the bottom of that grid, there's a module there called Personal Professional Leadership Development. This runs through the whole year as a, what we call a spine module. You get an academic mentor who will basically hold your hand through the whole course, support you, um, look at your academic development and look at your personal development. Throughout the year, you have to complete an e-portfolio, which you can keep with you when you leave the university. And that's a really fantastic resource for you when you're going out into the job market. So in that e-portfolio, we'll want you to audit yourself at the start of the year, identify your weaknesses um, from a personal and professional perspective. Um, and then through the year, we'll expect you to do um, personal development work. There's lots and lots of choices here at the university in terms of workshops, talks, support from um, mentors, Chartered Management Institute support, um, uh, and uh, there's there's uh, just one of the challenges is in picking the, from the choices that we have because there's so much here at the university that you can do. At the end of the year, you'll do um, an interview and a presentation to your academic mentor um, about your personal development. There is also the option within the MBA of the two-year MBA. So there is the placement option. So you would take that up just before the one-year students start their business research project. You would work throughout the year to get your placement opportunity and if you were successful you would then go off and work in your organisation. Nidhi can tell you more about that in a bit because she's one of those very successful students who's managed to, to get a great placement in a great organisation in London. Um, we also, of course, next year we have the work visa option. So even if you're on the one year course, you will be able to stay in the UK for two years um, and look for employment within, within the country during that time as well. So you don't have to do the placement option if that's not something you would prefer not to do. Um, so if we just move on to the next slide, I think we've covered that one. So just to summarise, um, the MBA, um, so we throughout the course, 
we, yes, of course, we're looking at knowledge, and but through that knowledge, you will develop, develop a set of skills as a leader. So the focus is very much on you being a strategic leader and your personal development. Flavio pointed to it earlier. So I often talk to my students about it. So the it bit is, mm -hmm. have you got it when you get into an interview? Um, can you be convincing? Are you somebody that people see as a leader, somebody who, who would deliver? Every job is about delivery. Can you provide that confidence that you've got those personal skills, those softer skills that every organisation looks for? And we work very hard at the business school to help you develop those in the right way for you in a personalised way for you. So, uh, and we give you a range of experiences, so your classes, the academic theories, practical examples so for example i run the marketing module and we have a live simulation that, that people that students work on um, which has a dynamic market and that's a group students love that experience we have key studies we have real organizations that come into the university so there's lots and lots of opportunity to get that practice linked lots of our lecturers have practical experience i myself worked in industry for 11 years before coming in to teach. And I'm, I'm not alone in that within the teaching team. So uh, we're very much focused on practice itself. Uh, if we just move to the next slide, you'll see there this, this diagram shows you that link between theories, um, real world examples. So there you've got a, a range of things that we do. Experiential learning, so that's putting it into practice. Um, uh, I've just remembered here the three-day residential, so I'll, I'll go back to the beginning of the course. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important part of the course. So we take, um, we, we have induction. We we go up this year. We went up to Derbyshire, which is a, a region, a very beautiful region near Nottingham, and we went to the birthplace of industrialisation. We went to the first ever factory in the world. And we heard about the ethics of business during that era. Uh, we then went to Chatsworth House, one of the grand houses of England, and we had a tour and a talk. Um, and again, we looked at the annual report. The next day, the students uh, did a presentation on strategies for Chatsworth House. Again, for that organisation, values ran through their business approach. So it linked very nicely between the, the, the kind of Arkwright Mill first factory and a current live organisation. We did some personal development work and then in the evening we linked that to CVs and employability. So we took it from, from the big picture of business through to personal development, through to your individual CV and what that means for you, what this knowledge means for you in presenting yourself out there to the world. The next day we went to a outward bound place and we did some team working through the medium of zip wires and um, uh, climbing trees and fun things like that. So it wasn't just all hard work. So it was a great bonding experience. Remember, yeah, we, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, have, we have students from all over the world. We want the students to, I think we had 15 countries this year join us in September. Well, that's the so um, uh, we need everybody to connect really quickly, get to know each other, get to know the good and bad, learn about themselves, learn about each other so that they can form and by play having fun as by well. having fun as well. Yeah. And seeing a bit of England as well Absolutely. and seeing how business operates. Yes, giving the culture yes. space and uh, yeah. seeing the differences and getting yeah. knowledge out of it. Yeah, so it's a, a wonderful experience. But again, it's very much about showing students the practice of business as well and linking that to the personal self, which you can see in that diagram. The personalization bit is core to every course that we run here at the business school and the MBA is a great example of that um, for the business school. So next slide please. So again this next slide just shows you how core, you know, theory is important, practice is important, experience and observation and then reflecting on that through your personal development module so that you can, you're not just learning stuff for learning's sake, you're really taking that knowledge and taking it back to you as an individual and you as an MBA leader going forward um, and that's how the personal development module I, works. I would say to apply this very holistic a view of sharing all the four different angles into mm -hmm. a practical side, wherever the reality that comes from, and apply them whenever is applicable to mm -hmm. their own reality. 
Absolutely. So mm -hmm. that's that's where personalization is so important. So that's where at the start of the year you auditing yourself and, and seeing what you where you are at that point. Some people have a really clear direction of what they want from the MBA and they have a clear strategy in place for their own personal development. Other people are using the MBA to learn about themselves and, and develop a journey that they haven't quite discovered yet. So again, whatever your starting point will help you get to that end point. Through your individual, through your practice. Every individual take some out of it, regardless of whether they have experience, they know they're good, they can learn from one for a little bit more, mm -hmm. or if they don't have an idea, they can build up this on what you offer them and they take home whatever they think is applicable to their own reality. Excellent. And one of my most enjoyable things to do mm -hmm. as a lecturer is to sit in on those presentations at the end of the year on the personal development mm -hmm. module and See the students stand there and go at the start of the year. I was like this. The, the, the learning curve. The learning curve. The learning curve it's amazing. Lesson. It's so rewarding. It, 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 is, it is. As a lecturer myself in the past, I, I appreciate that very much. So, yeah, excellent. So, next slide, please. So again, there's a lot of detail on this slide, but uh, in summary, uh, there is a wide range of assessment approaches that we use, and they're all designed to give you um, a range of business-related skills that will be of use to you in the business world, as well as allow us to assess you in an academic way. So you'll see there that there's uh, business reports, there's presentations, there's consultancy reports, um, there's traditional academic dissertation type pieces as well, reflective essays. So there's a wide range of different strategies that will fit most people. Mm -hmm. It's so variety, so don't it's let people, people down. Yeah. Yeah. You, so Plus, the model is going to be some of the strengths, yes. not only the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. okay, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. that's it. Exactly. So next slide, please. And again, there's a lot of detail on this slide, but that just gives you a view. This is this year. And these are the range of um, dates that we have for the assessments. You see they're, they're spread out along the year. It's very much a block delivery approach. So you will kind of bite through your MBA through the year mm -hmm. in a kind of managed way. Um, and there's lots of support from your tutors. So there's lots of places you can get support with those assessments. Um, my marketing module has already run for this year. You'll see the 3rd of November is coming up as the deadline <laughs> Sunday. We're meeting all the students on Friday morning. We've got a drop-in session for them. They've done a little practice essay. We're going to look at that before they hand in their first formal essay. We're going to give them feedback on the work that they've done so they feel confident about submitting that first piece of yeah, work. Yeah, give them very much support just before the, the whole thing gets yeah, through. Absolutely, it starts <laughs> getting very serious. Yes, okay. Yeah, nice. nice. So the next slide, please. So again, this just summarises the point I made just now, that there's lots and lots of places where you can get support um, as a student. So your academic mentor is really important. You are central to this, so you need to access that support but there's lots of support there academic mentor uh, you can get an industry mentor so we have a network of alumni fellows who are sitting waiting to support people in their development journeys um, so you can get access to that you've also got the employability team and people um, tell you more about that in a bit uh, but this the support the challenge sometimes is who do I go to? Because there's so many yeah, people so, that you well, can so it's, go it's, to. It's a problem to have. Like yes. I, I, I'm one of my directors in the age to work in the city to say, have a good problem to have, too many things to sell, too many clients, so yes. you have to stretch yourself. Oh, yeah, yes. you know, it's a good problem to have, yes. variety so, and diversity. But I think the key thing is you're not alone. You're not sitting in a classroom with mm -hmm. hundreds of others. Mm -hmm. You're in a small group. Oh, yes, yeah, true. I'll tell, tell our students more, potential, mm -hmm. studio, potential students more about the size of the class and the, what they get out of it. So, it's not clear for them. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my perfect size for class is about 30, mm -hmm. uh, but we would perhaps stretch to 35 if we needed to. Uh, but it's definitely small based teaching. So we would say you were in for a day in a, for a class. Um, it would be very interactive. We'd give, so we tend, what I try to do as a rule of thumb is every kind of 25 to 35 minutes have mm -hmm. an exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's very interactive, it's very much about the students uh, being involved and engaged and co-creating their learning between the lecturing staff and the other students in the room, because quite often MBA students learn more from each other than they do. Oh, absolutely, also, they yeah, absolutely. They, they, like, they come they're as well, and they bring experience from all over the absolutely. world, different sorts of areas of business industries and exchange and how to apply that particular 
uh, knowledge mm -hmm. each other industries, learn from each other, absolutely. And I learn from the yeah. students also, mm -hmm. and I find it fascinating to work from student, with students from all over the world and hear about their experiences in their own countries. And uh, as far as I remember, you guys have teaching excellence. Yes, so we are very proud that we have what is called TEF Gold. So Tef Gold. the government has come in and assessed all the universities in England, and we are gold. We are the top rated uh, teaching excellence quality, which not all universities have. We also have our uh, accreditations. So we have two key accreditations, ASASB and Equus uh, accreditation from EFMD. Basically, that means we're in, I think it's the top 1% of business yes, schools in the world, the world. The third, and, the and it means that it, for you as a student, it means that you you have to so the, for example, the international consultancy experience. Mm -hmm. There's lots of good universities globally that want to work with us because we have these right and so it opens open opportunities doors. for lot students. Open doors. And we'd like to talk a bit more about, or oh, actually, as I was just going to say, because um, as Julie mentioned, uh, chief F, that means that uh, the lectures are here and not in business school. They spend more time teaching and uh, giving mm -hmm. you time uh, through knowledge than researching, which mm -hmm. is a great difference. Instead of having researchers that come and just throw their books at you, you've got people that actually do the proper teaching mm -hmm. practice, they actually deliver the knowledge in the highest possible level, which it means for you that can come learn here, your learning curve will be exponential. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very important to us, you know, we, we spend a lot of time, there's lots of development for staff here mm -hmm. to develop our teaching skills and there's lots of development opportunities as, as a lecturer to, to ensure that's that's it's, the, the, the standard sketch yes. as high as possible. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, um, so as part of your MBA, you're also part of the uh, Chartered Management Institute, so you have the opportunity to be a member of the CMI during your course. What that gives you is access to um, uh, lots of materials online, uh, which are more practice related. You can also um, get the CMI Level 7 qualification in leadership at the end of your course. We had the CMI yesterday and they came in and assessed last year's students. So everybody's getting a diploma in, in the Chartered Management. So you get two qualifications. Yeah, the one. professional one and the exactly. and and academic this, one. So the CMI are a global institution as well. So this is something that's recognized globally. So there's a matter where you take it. People would recognize it as a, a, a standard, a quality standard that someone yeah. has achieved it. Yeah, professional qualifications are highly important and uh, that's the reason why they're not in would they do that because we know without the practice it doesn't make it doesn't make much yeah, sense absolutely and we have a range of professionals so in my last course we had a professional qualification with the chartered institute of marketing oh, yeah, so lots of courses <laughs> uh, have this, have this um, the chartered management institute is the one that is most appropriate for the mba so that's it so so yeah so that's that's all from me if there's anything else no julie thank you so much for thank you so much for your, for your account and now i'm going to bring it over uh kate kate's a good friend of mine she's been here in the last webinar with your masters and kate is back here kate is, is, uh, is, okay. nice. <laughs> excellent so kate is the career consultant so um after julie's account of what you get as as a, as a student through the academic care curriculum, you're going to understand how the support that Julie spoke so much comes from the career and employability department. Kate, it's all yours. Fantastic. Thank you. So yeah. I'm one of the careers consultants for the business school um, and the MBAs are some of the cohort that I look after. Um, so what can we offer you when you're here? So we have a variety of support for you. Um, both in terms of employability sessions, we come into your, um, we come into, sorry, we come into your lessons, we come into your curricula, we deliver some really specialist um, level sessions to MBAs to try and meet you where you are. Again, like Julie was saying, I ensure that those, those are interactive, and we have a range of people that come in and deliver those as well. We actually have one for the current students on Friday where we are bringing in some students who have completed this course or are currently doing this course to deliver information as well as us presenting and, and delivering um, workshops and interactive sessions too. In addition, we have a 
full kind of careers guidance service so you can have one-to-one -one guidance appointments whether that's traditional guidance or more support with your decision making or career action planning in addition to that we also have a drop-in service so it might be that you want to have an application reviewed really quickly because the deadline's coming up Monday to Friday, we have a service available to you, so you don't have to book an appointment that's available all the time. And that might be more based on applying for a job, so they're having your CV reviewed, interview techniques or coaching and so on. So basically that on call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so call Kate, <laughs> if you have a job interview, you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If they're a student here, of course. Of course, yeah, um, you have to come here first. <laughs> In addition, we have 24 hour access anywhere in the world to our students for um, a brilliant award winning website called Employability Online. Within there, whilst there's very good general employability advice and tailored to different areas, we do have some particular pages which might be of interest to you, including for international students and for postgraduate students, which is slightly more tailored. In addition, we bring employers on campus. We have a number of jobs fairs for you to go and speak to them, to find out about what it's like to work for their organisations and to get yourselves known there. We also bring on employers for smaller talks, to carry out challenges and to find out the opportunities that they have that they're offering. If you are thinking about applying to the two year course that has a placement option, then that can be really invaluable in terms of finding out about placement opportunities that are currently live. We do have a number of jobs and placements databases, including Future Hub, which is our specialist one, but we also have access to some through our accreditations, such as the MBA Exchange and Hired. In addition to that, we support our students three years after they've graduated as well. And if that means that you go back to your home country or you go and work somewhere else, we can do that via email and possibly through Skype and services like that as well. And the world is your pearl. <laughs> it's very small. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Um, and in addition to that, the specialist support that we have online available to you includes information about your visa, employers that are interested in sponsoring tier two visas for once you graduate, um, but also access to global careers and jobs websites, things like Going Global that has a wealth of information, Student Circus and Gradlink. We do have regular international students employability workshops and we're part of the Midlands International Group where they hold a really good webinar series every year for international students. If you're considering doing the two-year placement option, we also have a postgraduate placement coordinator who can work with you on a one-to-one -one basis to help find out exactly what your interests are, where you're thinking about um, I guess pitching yourself in terms of the kind of placement that you would like and what you hope to gain from that. And they can coach you through some of those specialist areas to help yourself become more employable and I guess on the radar of a lot of employers. We're quite unique at NTU in the business school because there's not a lot of universities that offer year long placements for master students or MBA students. And so this is a unique offer to you and we try and support you through that as much as we can. And I suppose that was the interesting part for the students who are listening to us is the fact that you probably coach them. What, uh, because it's an important power then to find sure. their own place by asking the right questions and getting to find their own solutions. You, don't, you guide but don't tell them what to do, you just offer them. Definitely. Make them think about what they're good at. Definitely. I think Nikki's going to say a little bit more about that. Oh, yeah, she's been through the process, okay, so yeah, I shall leave some of that to her. Great. If we could go to the next slide, please. Fantastic. So I thought you might want to know what about some of the destinations from people who have studied on the MBA here, um, both in terms of jobs when they graduated as well as placement roles. So here are some of the destinations from um, the Destination of Leavers of Higher Education surveys. This survey is now stopped and waiting for the next set of data. So this is the most recent data, even though it seems a little bit old. And MBA graduates have worked at organisations such as um, Linklaters, Ecobank, Consultancy services with Tata and Marketing. Football clubs. Yeah, <laughs> as well. and you can see their, their, their job titles on the left hand side as well. So some consultants, managers and researchers. 
On the next slide, I've got some placement yeah. destination data, and there you can see Chelsea Football Club, um, as well as General Electric and, and so on. The titles, again, are on the left-hand side, just a handful of roles. These are not all of the roles, and it's not an exhaustive list, but I thought it might give you a nice picture to see the kinds of varieties um, of roles that people undertake, such as projects and business associates or um, development in term and management um, associate and so on. On the final, sorry, my final slide, I think it's just this one here, I want to tell you just a little bit about two different, uh, very different placements that oh, yeah. some of the MBA students um, have been on. I'm not going to give you the full details, I just want to whet your appetite a little bit. <laughs> so uh, these are quite, I guess, in contrast from each other. It is very interesting, it's great that you brought this up during your, your brief. Yes, uh, yeah, it's very interesting, very contrasting from this Go on, you tell, you tell us, you tell us. Okay. Like you tell us more. So um, we have um, an MBA student who applied for a placement at Nissan. They went through the normal application process and were competitive, really stood out well against other students going for this role. They had to go through a grueling eight stages in the application process, which is actually the most we've heard for any UK placement. Um, but once on placement, not only obviously did they get that successfully, they were fantastic on the placement and really then um, succeeded within that and it was brilliant. So that's an example of um, a placement that's advertised and we can support MBA students to look for advertised roles, to really pick out the information and tailor their applications to those. And then on the right hand side you have White Rose, which is a series of um, Vintage clothing shops is probably the best. Yeah, place vintage. To yeah, in my time is of course a flea market or second-hand mm -hmm. shops, and those vintage. But uh, and I think the whole concept that you guys managed to have the Nissan and something else completely on the other end of the scale, Definitely. sustainability, ethics. It's, it's amazing because not everybody wants to work in this side. Not course, everybody yes. wants to work in a manufacturer. Some people in services, some people in something that plays a good part of their heart. Right? differently. So tell us a bit more about the White Rose because when you told me I was absolutely fascinated. Sure. And I'm sure they will as well, please. Yeah, so White Rose supports um, a charity called Aegis and they have a number of shops which started out in Nottingham and they're slightly uh, branching out now to new areas such as Manchester and so on. The founders actually studied here in the business school. Oh, wow. And <laughs> says a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we had a very recent MBA student who was really interested in working for such a cause. Um, she actually did a little bit of volunteering for them first mm -hmm. and then realised that maybe she could do a placement there. So it's completely self-sourced. She wrote a marketing pitch. Mm -hmm. She went to the founders and delivered this pitch and was successful in becoming a marketing and communications Empowerment, coordinator. Yeah, Empowerment. Definitely. Empowerment. So let's say, ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to you now. That's what you get over here. You're going to get the encouragement to empower yourself to go to higher, to fly higher. Definitely. And on that note, I'm going to pass over... So Nidhi, oh, yeah. so I want to show you how she's managed to do that. Without any so, save the best for last. <laughs> so Nidhi is one of the lowest, oh, actually not ours, but their students who actually got a placement into Chelsea Football Club. And the camera's going to come to us. Thanks, Chris. Here we go. Nidhi, thanks so much for being here today. It's a pleasure to have someone. Much. The evidence of everything you said so far to talk to the students and tell you about your experience. Tell about what you've been through and the highlights and how is being your placement at Chelsea Football Club. You might get one if you listen to that. <laughs> Just listen to me. Go on, Nidhi. Right. I get you this stage. Hi. Right. So I'm uh, doing my placement here at Chelsea Football Club as insight analyst. And uh, about a year back, uh, there were several reasons that encouraged me to take up uh, an MBA within the UK, which I'm sure a lot of students watching right now will also be doing the same kind of research, the same kind of uh, rigorous uh, inquiry about what are the uh, uh, in, uh, laurels that the university has, the accreditations that we have. All that apart, and for my personal reason, one of the things was that this is one of the few universities that offers a digital marketing management as part of an MBA course, which is something uh, that itself proves that the university is in touch with the times because uh, everything is going digital. So it's very important to have something that is very focused on digital marketing. And uh, once I was here, a lot of uh, things that Julie and Kate mentioned right now is something that I've experienced and I personally can vouch for. Uh, one of the biggest highlights was that uh, the, uh, the way the education is uh, 
uh, imparted. It's not something that uh, I have at least usually seen where teachers talk at you. It's not unidimensional. It, it's got several aspects that uh, Julie uh, earlier took us through where uh, you uh, take in or internalize the education from various point of views, various experiences and various touch points. And one such highlight that this particular MBA at Nottingham Business School gave was the strategic consultancy project. And it is not like uh, the usual uh, business school projects that I have been uh, part of earlier. Uh, this is a very real world issue that is presented to us where businesses have, a, it could be a social enterprise, it could be a, a, a small time entrepreneur, it could be any kind of business where you as students are grouped together, come up with solutions that will actually make a difference in their business. And that is not something you get to do uh, as part of an everyday course. And uh, having done one in UK and one abroad, uh, that also adds to the global uh, perspective, which uh, again, I believe is uh, a unique uh, selling proposition of uh, in, uh, MBS, uh, because this is uh, one place where you see a lot of diverse uh, backgrounds, uh, students from a lot, many different parts of the world. Um, other than that, uh, my personal favorite, if I'm to point out, is uh, the fact that there is a lot of stress on responsible leadership, which is something that is, again, uh, important given the times that we live in. Uh, it's not just important to follow, I mean, while it is important to follow uh, bottom lines and profits, uh, it is also important to make sure that your business sustains in the long run. And what makes a true leader in the future is something that uh, the university stresses a lot upon. And at that point, uh, Another key factor is that uh, there's a lot of dialogue between the university and the industry, which is evident because uh, the learning is very industry focused. You don't feel like you walk into the industry with a lot of bookish knowledge. You actually walk into the industry ready to actually take on real world problems. And that has been one of the amazing uh, traits that I gained because it helped me a lot with placement. Uh, that brings me to what uh, Kate mentioned earlier. Uh, the coach coaching is not just on aspects like CV reviews or, uh, you know, uh, the uh, workshops that we have where a lot of uh, uh, experience is provided, but it's also on how do we individually utilize those resources to the best of our benefits. So. Each of us in my cohort had a different dream, a different aspiration, a different goal in their uh, lives. And uh, employability actually helped us uh, target our skills, our aspirations in a way that would actually lead, up, lead us to our personalized goals. And uh, some of the resources, not just the library, uh, stuff like uh, LinkedIn Learning and uh, how to use LinkedIn in the first place. These are aspects that actually add value. and. Uh, Having had access to LinkedIn Learning is something that's actually added a lot more certifications and skills to our, our resumes and our profiles, uh, which we might not have been otherwise able to utilize. So that's one amazing. So fact. resources play a highly important part during the engagement. Yes, and I personally also benefited from uh, the mock assessment centers and uh, interview uh, experiences that we've had at the university. I've attended a couple of them, and that actually prepared me for what an assessment center would look like, which is what. Chelsea actually had for us. Uh, uh, we, uh, my resume was selected and then I was called for a full day assessment center and uh, there were a bunch of students from different universities in the UK and I actually felt prepared because I, I actually uh, uh, had been through that experience here so that was amazing as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, uh, essentially uh, the experience at Chelsea, if I'm to talk about... Uh, yes, please, tell me about, about how's it going in Chelsea. <laughs> Are they loving you? <laughs> I don't have to say that it is one of the top uh, EPL mm. clubs right now, and uh, it's a great global brand to work with. And I get to work at Stamford Bridge, which is like the uh, ultimate holy place for yeah. football fans, uh, at least Chelsea fans, I would say. So uh, other than that, I have a great uh, line manager. Uh, we are two people in the inside a data analytics uh, team, So, we, which means that we are each other's backup. So within the larger scope of business anal analytics, uh, we handle the data analytics part and the role is actually a very responsible and uh, autonomous ro role and you're dealing with people's data which is confidential which is very sensitive and uh, the industry or let's say Chelsea in this case actually expects you to come with that kind of maturity and understanding of what it means and you can't 
uh, go there and uh, you know you cannot go there with a certain found without a certain foundation and that foundation is something i would definitely say that the university has uh, equipped me with uh, so i was able to take on a responsible and uh, sensitive role like that and uh, able to deliver within almost like three months because the first three months is all about learning a whole set of new skills. That is an amazing thing that again Chelsea has uh, given me and I feel uh, learning all these new skills that you know at any stage uh, only adds more value so I've been very lucky. With you were sharing with me earlier off the cameras <laughs> uh, how was the experience about um, literally uh, hit the ground running which yeah. is again you think of it uh, ladies and gentlemen well, listen now um not university takes this lady or actually actually makes her way by empowerment into london and chelsea football club and she understands now the importance or she understood it before and now she sees the highly uh, the, the how how important it is to actually to be challenged how important it should be in a point that okay fine the uk is tough London is a tough environment, but how much you have achieved from it? Isn't it? Yeah, so which is why I think all, what I spoke earlier about not having just a unidimensional approach of uh, the lecturers just coming and talking to you and telling you that this is it and just leaving you to it. But in, instead, there is this whole uh, continuous process of pushing you out of the comfort zone, making you want to go and figure out things or, on your own, which actually then equips you to you know, be more empowered and know what it takes to uh, uh, address these things. And be comfortable, confident as well. Confident. So, confident, you know, I know, I've been through, and now I know that that's the attitude is expected from me, and I face it, of course. As, as we have with a very successful woman, that actually is empowered, has been more empowered and confident. It doesn't mean that you, you, you not have to be in this stage, but you can get that by, by, this, by following the example, by listening to her, her account. And uh, I, we are running a little bit out of time, aren't we? Are we good? We're good? Okay. Nidhi, um, 10 minutes. Okay, fine. So we have now 10 minutes for Nidhi. Do you like to enter anything else you find relevant for the students who are listening to, or potential students that are listening to us? I'm uh, just putting myself in the position that a lot of listeners of ours are in today. A lot of people would want to know how exactly did I find the Chelsea placement from uh, being in the university. Actually, and I have to actually point it out that it is the university's resource called In Place. Uh, because there are lots of jobs advertised across a lot of platforms which all of us look at, but essentially the key factor is that uh, jobs advertised on the university portal are intended to hire uh, uh, students from the university. So therefore that increases your chances of uh, getting through that because those are typically jobs put out by managers who know about the university and who are very keen on uh, students and their skills, uh, a, a specific set of skills from the university. So there's a lot more chances of getting a placement if you keep uh, uh, utilizing the in-place uh, resource. So another, another strong reason why to, to choose Nottingham as the place to come when you come to the UK for your MBA. Right, so now we're going to move into Q&A. So we have Dani, Daniela back to us um, to read us some questions. And um, ladies, would like to come, we come in just come to us. Yeah, yeah, come to us. Yeah, move chairs. Let's do a little singing chairs. <laughs> okay, so we have a little panel here. And uh, so questions will be redirected either by me or someone who feels, feels that is your area of expertise, by all means, just answer it. Okay, Danny, out to my love. Okay, great. First of all, thank you all for uh, giving this presentation to our attendees of what the benefits of an MBA in, in the UK are and how a top business school such as NTU can support the students academically, professionally, and personally when doing so. So to the questions, um, the first one we have directly to Nidhi. Uh, it is from Basi. <laughs> and it is how many, uh, how long did it take you to find the job? Um, so essentially employability and our lecturers encourage us to start looking uh, pretty much a few months into the course in the sense start networking, start finding out what the environment is about, what the employability scene is in the UK to understand, to familiarize. So uh, we keep browsing a lot of uh, opportunities on LinkedIn, on uh, other job portals and even understanding how the university job portals work and there were career fairs that we also in, uh, interacted with and we came to know about uh, 
facilities like hi hired and uh, other options. So the process starts very early on so that you're essentially cued into what's going on. It's not a very last minute thing. You'll have to do your uh, homework, yes, uh, due diligence, yeah. which it takes because it is a process. It, it is not a one shot thing, I would say. And I'd just like to add to that. We start, as I mentioned earlier, in induction, we had Fiona from the employability team come up and do a session in the evening on, so you've learnt some stuff already, what does that mean for your CV? On Friday, the current MBA students have an afternoon with Kate, and that's a very much a, a very focused session on CV and how you present yourself out to the job market. So we're, we're starting that work from day one, really, with students. So yeah, you keep, keep the, eye, the, ball, the eye on the ball from day one. <laughs> Danny, any other questions? Yes, there are. Um, we have several. So, guys, now is the time to ask even more questions if you have on your mind. Um, the next one is again from Basi, uh, which is in terms of uh, visa and time. How can you elaborate a bit more on how much time they they would stay within the UK after graduation and latest changes? How the change of law? Um, probably the best one to talk about. I don't know if I'm the best one to talk about. The laws have changed. It's two years. As yes. I understand, they've just been passed in the parliament. Yeah, so the government have just recently announced mm -hmm. that they, uh, students can stay for two years in, in the UK. Like it was in the past. Like it was previously. Yeah. So yeah. They've, yeah. they've reverted back. So I think they recognised that yes. so the previous approach wasn't really that appealing. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and that's the reason. Yeah. So we're Some back light. to the two years. Yeah. Two years in the UK. Two years that you can then, in, when you're not in a business school, you have the chance of doing an internship or look for your own job. Mm -hmm. So again, broaden up your spectrum of alternatives. Mm -hmm. Danny, anything? Any other questions? Great, thank you. So thank you. Um, apart from the two years um, opportunity where you get to do a placement in the second year, can you get to do a part-time job while studying? This is Sure, yeah, definitely. We have do have um, a service offer to support with that as well. So we have something called Job Shop, um, which incorporates jobs in the local area in a wide variety of sectors, but also uni temps, which are jobs available at Nottingham Trent University on campus. And they can range from and it's all sorts of things, from being a catering assistant to being a student ambassador, a mentor, even up to like research associates for like a few days a week or for a very short amount of time onto particular projects or for you know one day a week for a lot longer process as well. And it's worth saying that also for you guys that are overseas, that don't forget in this virtual world, there's a lot of different sorts of jobs you can actually find out by living in the UK that you can apply online and working from home. Yeah. Uh, uh, even coaching sometimes, mm -hmm. if you are already in the stage of your career that you can train, coach, and mentor. They can train, coach, and mentor in your home council by still living here, or even other council in Europe, or in America, or Australia. Mm -hmm. So, and something that you're going to learn more while you're here with Kate. Uh, <laughs> and what I'd like to add to that is in your personal development module, you can include that part time work as part of your personal development. So, you can be learning things in that part time job. Even if it's something like working in a restaurant, you're still learning teamwork and leadership. You know, there's engaging with difficult people. You know, challenges. Like challenges. Challenge, lots actually, of yeah, things yeah. that you can then reflect on and include that as part of your assessment. So definitely. I would definitely encourage people Sorry. to do that. If I may add to that, uh, that experience can also be added to the Accelerate Employability Award. This is something that we, a few of our students did, and uh, there's a bronze, silver, and a gold, uh, which actually improves your prospects of employment in the industry and that's a badge that you can put on your LinkedIn page. Absolutely. Right? People sometimes think they work in hospitality is degrading. No. no I think so my own experience is a lovely learning curve. It makes you learn a lot, especially if you come from a very wealthy background and never had to serve anyone. Trust me, it's, it's, it's valuable, very valuable. Uh, I can talk from my own experience. <laughs> <laughs> Please carry on. Great, thank you. So the next question is from Bernard, and he's asking if the admission for the next intake is now open, and when is the closing deadline for the application? So yes, it's very much open. I'd encourage you to apply as soon as you can, um, and I believe applications. I think we can take them up to early August. Danielle, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> you can't listen to that. Am I right? It's easier than that. Um, yes, you're very right. <laughs> okay, and um, would you also um, tell Ara 
that is asking how long it takes uh, to be admitted in the program, the application process itself. Ooh, um, well, uh, we would expect you to upload information. Um, and again, that depends on how accessible that information is. So things like your previous transcripts and qualifications and, and all that kind of stuff that we, we need to assess as part of your application. So if that's if you've got that sitting ready to go, you know, you can get that in the system and then it just runs through our normal processes. I'm not quite sure. That it's like no, then I think you're the best one to say yeah. because you, you actually help students to go through the process. Of, uh, mm -hmm. So please answer yeah. this question. Yes, I, I can also elaborate on this. Normally, if we have all documents in order, which I will be the person to help you out with, to go through the process smoothly, it will take of about, I would say, 14 UK days to get a response from the team. And I, I will assess all the applications. So I'm really keen to see a CV um, with your experience on there and the kind of level of experience that you've had, the sort of work that you've undertaken. Um, and the personal statement is really important. So I'm keen to see why you want to do an MBA, what you can bring to the MBA, and what you hope to achieve in the future once you've got the MBA. And to make sure that you actually write it spot on and Julie really likes it, you talk to Daniela. She's an expert to know exactly how to guide you through a mentor, you to write the meaningful things and bring out of the best of what you have to offer. So, so I'm keen to see, again, three to five years minimum professional experience um, and a two one is what we look for. Okay. There's there's always some flexibility around that two one if people have great experience. I'm I'm more excited about that often. Okay, excellent, excellent. It's worth mentioning that uh, the process should start early. Because don't forget, students overseas sometimes have to go through the visa process, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you start, the better. Don't leave things for the last time, doesn't it, Danny? Then it's very good. Absolutely. That Absolutely. Normally, if you leave things at the very end, it will be very stressful. That's why I also advise my students that I work with, the sooner the better, it's stress-free. You find out better accommodations for um, I would say a um, reasonable price. Also, you get your visa documents sorted and um, yeah, it, at the end you have a good memory of the whole journey that go through together. Exactly. Yeah. Just on that qualification things, we're of course looking for IELTS 6.5. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's yeah. Very important too. Yeah. Um, another question that we have from Bernard is if you can tell uh, to our attendees a bit, about, a bit more about the scholarship opportunities for the full-time MBA. Would you like to take this one, Danny, yourself? <laughs> well, I can also do it. <laughs> so normally the university offers between 25 to 50% off the fees. The thing that you have to do first and apply and get accepted, of course. Then later on, it is on competitive basis and also merit basis. The team would look at your overall profile and um, decide whether you would be awarded an amount of it. Yeah, so it's very much based on quality. So the scholarship there is to increase quality applicants to come to yeah. the university. So it's really around you know, what you can bring to the MBA, what you add to the MBA, and your vision for the future. You know, what benefit are you going to bring to yourself and to the world mm -hmm. by doing your MBA? Remember, we're very concerned with responsibility, sustainability, and ethics. Yes, sustainability, as most of you know now, is the keyword for a better, beautiful world. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, they are very aware of it, and that's what, bear with you in mind, if you would like to come here, if you fit into this criteria. Um, Danny? Yeah, that's, that's all that I have for now as questions. If there's anything more, I, I would encourage the attendees to send them now. Let's just give them, perhaps, a couple of... Like well, we actually, we are pretty much like uh, on time, to, it's 5.30, yeah. we actually, yeah. it's, uh, if anyone has any, any more questions, I strongly suggest to send over, regardless, you're going to have access to these questions, we either rep uh, reply ourselves or send to the member of the team to reply, and uh, we follow up later with you. Danny, would you like to wrap up the, the, the yeah. whole thing? I would, I would. First of all, thank you all for uh, being 
here for the attendees we had today for um, again sharing the benefits of doing an MBA in the UK and in NTU. Um, other than that, thank you also for joining our webinar. I hope you found it useful and in case you have further questions, you can see my contacts on the slide that you, you're looking at and I'll be happy to further communicate with you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dami. Thanks very much for the whole NBS team and Chris behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to uh, working with you and having another webinar soon in the future. Hey, thanks so much for coming to London all the way down here to Nottingham and for your expose. It was absolutely priceless. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Cheers. Have a good Thank evening. You. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.